Hello everyone, welcome back to The Broken Quill. I'm James A. Moores, and welcome to part three of a three-part series looking into narrative elements of Death Stranding, a Japanese video game by Hideo Kojima. If you're interested in the use of particular imagery in this game, then go ahead and check out part one. And if you're interested in environmental storytelling, you should check out part two. Links for all that in the description. This series is just my opinion. I know usually I speak from a place of authority, but for these videos, it's just us talking about an interesting piece of Japanese literature. In this video, we'll be looking at the themes of Hideo Kojima as woven into his work. It won't be exhaustive, and I know I'll leave a lot out. As always, spoilers for Death Stranding. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So Death Stranding wears its themes on its sleeve. It's about connections. There are other themes, death, coming to terms with life, accepting the end, anti-war, environmentalism, pregnancy, but we're going to focus on the connections we make. Let's start with the basics. So the most obvious story beat here is Sam Porter Bridges is tasked with reforging the broken bonds of America. He is to carry supplies across the broken nation and forge a link between each city using his cupid. Cities, known as knots, make the Cairo network Sam is forging into a rope. The Cairo network connects disparate people who have been cut off from the rest of society and links them together. These are people trapped in bunkers scattered throughout the landscape. They suffer from depression and you bring them drugs. You bring them connection, and you try and restore the links that death has broken. This message of isolation through death and the fear of death is reforged by an acceptance of death. You see, the chiral network is a link that passes through the beach, a purgatory where the dead enter before being taken to the afterlife. So people accept this link with death. They stop hiding in bunkers and they reforge their connections with humanity. When you connect each knot, you lift up, floating in the air, your baby alights, and you get the same animation you do when you're in the presence of the dead. We hear voices. They grow louder and louder as we connect to others. We realize very quickly in the game that connection is an important theme. It's in everything. We put down ladders, bridges, we lay down ropes so we can climb down sheer cliffs, and later, we can even build roads. These objects are then sent to other players online. They appear in their worlds and ease the journeys of others. As the cities are lonely and difficult when disconnected, needing drugs to sustain themselves, so is the movement of the player. The connections we forge to the knots ease their burdens. They no longer need the drugs. The connections we forge with other players ease their burdens. They are able to climb a sheer cliff, to ford a river, to speed across the plains on a motorbike. We come together as a community. We help each other. And those that come after us, however far down that line may be, these structures will still be there. If we maintain them, keep them in tip-top shape, and they won't go away. And players, however long down the line, will have their burdens eased by someone they have never met, but have forged a connection just by walking over a ladder and giving a like. One of the strongest bonds, and hardest bonds to forge, are roads. They have the most benefit, the strongest link, and the hardest to build. The roads in the game don't take any one person to build. They require thousands and thousands of materials and are forged by the work of an entire community. Once built, the roads make for an easy commute over tough terrain and can turn a delivery which took a half hour to complete to just a few minutes. They automatically recharge the batteries of vehicles and exoskeletons and just make moving about the world easier. While we don't see the other players who leave materials at the roads, we can feel their presence, we connect with them. But there is a strong bond here. Ropes, ladders, bridges, generators, these things appear in the landscape, they sit on it. We make use of them, but we have a sense of them as other, as an object placed upon the ground. But roads aren't the same. Roads, whether by how we view them or simply their embeddedness in the terrain, 
They change the world itself. It is a tangible link between the knots. It is the rope which connects them. The shelters are not called knots, they are just the name of the person who lives there, but the roads twist and turn. They move across the landscape and they stop at every distribution center and city. The knots in the rope of the roads. I've mentioned this before, but there is definitely a discussion of the ties that bind. The blood of the covenant is stronger than the water of the womb. Clifford Unger is a man out of time. He wants his BB back. This is confusing to us because we understand a BB as a bridge baby, which we hold over our stomach. In essence, we can see this as Clifford Unger trying to steal our unborn baby. From flashbacks, we understand that he is the father of a bridge baby, and he is chasing us through time and space to get it back. What we don't realize is that the bridge baby is not the one we hold over our stomach. We fight with Unger, the combat veteran. We face him down in the mud of the trenches. He spills our blood, we spill his. He gropes for the baby we hold and tries to grab at us. Finally, in the mud and dirt under the canopy of Vietnam, Sam realizes that Clifford has a bond with the baby. It is, after all, his baby. So we finally give in and offer him his BB back. But it's not the baby. It's us, he hugs, us. He holds us. He's been after us the entire time. We're his son. We've forged this bond together, not because of familial bonds, but because of what we have gone through together. While still a baby, Unger died for us. And when Sam appears in the memories, a specter across time, he puts himself in the way of the bullet. He tries desperately to protect a father he has never known, not because he's our father, but because he sacrificed everything for us. This familial and deep connected bond is sealed by touch and hugs. But once Unger died, Bridget Strand made herself our mother. She pulled Sam back from the brink of death, and in so doing, brought about the hole the BTs could use to travel from beach to our world. When Bridget is dying, when she's attached like a BT to the ceiling, she pulls herself across the ground. We pull away. We've always pulled away. We connect to our sister, Emily, who has always been there for us on the beach. They're not our biological parent, but there is a bond there, a bond between Emily and Sam so strong that despite Sam's hatred for his mother, he would move heaven and earth to rescue his sister. She held him in her arms, comforted him, and forged that bond not by the mere notion that she is Sam's sister, but through their shared ordeals. Finally, we hold a baby on our stomach. This is an obvious suggestion of pregnancy, and Sam connects with the baby. He attaches an umbilical cord to it and closes his eyes, and he becomes one with his beat bee. But he soothes it. When injured, it cries, and we cradle and coddle her. As our bond with our baby grows and grows, we start to talk about her in more caring and caring terms. Eventually, he calls her his partner. He doesn't see her as a baby, as his baby, but as a partner, a friend. Someone you forged a connection by pulling the packages, fighting BTs. You are a unit, two inseparable friends on a mission. And then Dead Man takes BB from us. And we're forced to go it alone to the cold snow-capped mountains. Sam quips that it's not the same without BB, that he misses her, that things are so much harder without her. He even names her Lou, and the UI shifts from Comfort BB to Comfort Lou. The game is showing us a bond being formed. It's not being formed simply because Lou is attached to our stomach, because Lou is, for lack of a better term, our baby, but because we've built a bond between us, we've built a connection. When Lou dies, and we make that hard decision to place her into an incinerator, we just can't let her go. We leave our connection to the peoples behind. We give up a connection that has been forced upon us. You see, your connection to the Cairo network and to your mission of reconnecting the world was forced upon you. A handcuff was placed on your hand. 
you were shackled. It wasn't something you chose, but something forced. By your surrogate mother, no less. You were born into it. They expected, because you are their son, that you would obey simply because of the water of the womb. Sam gives it up. He lets the link burn, and he saves the only link he forged in the story, the one connection he made himself. All other connections, while he calls them friend, are not the same, not dead man, not fragile. Sam breaks the pot open and resuscitates a dead Lou. She survives. We find out she is a she, and Sam names her Louise. We have forged a bond with Lou in life and the saving of life, as Unger forged with us in death as a sacrifice. Rhyming couplets. So the theme of connection is a powerful tool that Hideo Kojima wields. But there is a slightly more subtle message. It's in the names. Yes, yeah, some names in the game are basically just identifiers for a characteristic. Dead man is dead. Die Hardman refuses to die. Fragile is fragile, but not fragile. But most people are identified but what they give back to society. Their jobs. The engineer, the elder, the craftsman, the doctor. Sam, Porter, Bridges. Let's break that down. Sam is Uncle Sam, not just a recruiting tool or personification of America, but the myth. You see, the myth of Uncle Sam, where the name and character come from, is from soldiers in the War of 1812. The soldiers would wait patiently for the care packages of food from civilization as they fought. Samuel Wilson, a meatpacker from New York providing rations for the soldiers, marked his deliveries, as he was required to do so, as E-A-U-S. It became common to believe that the U.S. was Uncle Sam Wilson, or Uncle Sam. Sam is a personification of America, who comes from a man who forged links with soldiers and gave them a connection back home by delivering parcels. I hope you have enjoyed this series. I've done my best, and I'm not always sure I hit the mark. But either way, I hope you'll join me again, and remember, you're always welcome here at The Broken Quill. Thank you most kindly. Comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I look forward to seeing you here again.